Hello and welcome to the 10th Fundamental Investing with the Use of Programming tutorial where we left off. I was showing you all how to uh, further screen a batch of data that way you don't have to continue running through the whole huge set, right? So in this case, you know, instead of running through 3,000 bits of uh, 3,000 tickers, you can generate kind of a screened list that is very loose but yet kind of whittles down this list so the absolute absurdity uh, companies aren't included. That way every time you want to look through them you're not getting just crazy stuff that you it's just wasting your bandwidth and, and Yahoo's bandwidth. So um, so that's how to start screening stocks and then what we did here is this one was basically with a bunch of twos and now this one required a price to book of one instead of a price to book of two but it allowed the rest. So um, with that we generated here uh, all of these companies met that requirement and then at the end it printed out a, ver a very small list or a much smaller one anyway of companies and if we look through this list pretty quickly we see that AFAM is at least a decent one it, it's it's PEG or it's forward PEG right is it's 1.28 so the goal is really a one but 1.28 not so bad um, and you know the debt to equity is pretty low, the trailing PE is pretty low, um, price to book under one that's good so we're, we're, pretty, we're pretty happy with this company uh, again it doesn't meet all of the fundamental requirements however so just keep that in mind I'm not suggesting anybody goes out and, and buys AFAM by any means please heed the warning in front of the video <laughs> but let's say let's say we're interested we want to know more about AFAM right so uh, which is almost family so what do we do at this point, right? Once we've found all this information, where what might we do now? Well, at this point, I mean, we can look through this list and really I'd probably whittle this list down a little bit more and maybe require a debt to equity ratio that is a not not available, but also under uh, 40 or something like that would knock out quite a few of these companies immediately. Um, so this list would really be like 10 companies, right, or something like that. So you can probably do that and, and even get this list smaller. And at that point, you really can go through this stuff by hand. There's, it's not as necessary that you um, <clears throat> use a program anymore. But so, for example, let's let. How would we do that though? Because uh, there is one more thing I still want to show you guys as far as uh, acquiring this data. So let's say AFAM. We're interested to know more about AFAM. So what we can do is uh, you know, come over to Yahoo.com. Let me drag it over. Uh, this was that Navy Yard shooting, I guess. Anyway, finance, click on that, and we'll just put in AFAM. And can you believe Summers withdraw? I still I can't believe that happened. But anyway, really thought he was for sure going to get it. Um, okay, so we find AFAM. And then to get to some interesting information for AFAM, let's go to the income statements. The next thing we kind of want to know is, um, what are the financials for this company? Like, what's the bottom line? Is, is, are we are we doing good, you know, with this company or what? Like, why? Because generally, if it's undervalued, there's a good reason. But many times, there there it's just like, I don't know, poor sentiment and emotional kind of stuff. It can lead to very undervalued companies. So anyway, checking out their income statement, we can view both uh, quarterly, and we'll see that quarterly um, goes back only a year. Uh, fairly level, but again, they are the, here. They're kind of slowly uh, chipping away at earnings. And let's take a further back approach and let's check out all the annual data here. And let's go over. So this one goes back obviously three years. So December 31st, uh, 2012, 2011, 2010. But again, we can see that their earnings are actually slowly in decrease. Uh, so that would kind of make us shy away a little bit. But again, value investing, kind of one of the more bigger principles of value investing is that we kind of, we, you, you shy away from uh, speculation. So we're not looking, you know, we're not growth investors here. And we're not momentum investors here, <laughs> you know. So the fact that it's decreasing in profits isn't necessarily a, um, a something that's going to make us check this off the list. But at the same time, we want to know. Now, um, generally, you want to look more like five years back, if not ten years back. 
Uh, and if we kind of browse around here on Yahoo, we see that, whoa, there's really no easy way. Like, how do we get further back data? Well, I've kind of looked around online, and there is really no, at least free, source of historical, either quarterly or annual earnings data. So that kind of sucks, right? Uh, and you can buy it, and usually you have to buy it in batches, and it's you know in the hundreds, if not thousands of dollars for this financial data. But luckily, there is kind of a way around paying for that historical data. Um, don't think that many institutions are using this. I bet they're actually buying the data, but you can do this. So what can you do to get around this? Well, you can go to Google and either type in Wayback Machine or you can go to their website. It is, uh, let me just go back to the uh, homepage here. This is their homepage. It's archive.org and then slash web slash web.php. And here, what the idea of this is, is it basically they're, they're, they cache pages, right? They visit these pages and they just save all of the HTML. And then so what you can do is you can type in old internet pages into here and kind of visit the website from like way back in the day, right? So like we could go to oh, Facebook. Wow, Facebook, you're pretty lame. Anyway, due to robots.txt, Facebook won't let us parse them. That's great, Facebook. Thank you. Anyway, I was going to show you guys an old version of Facebook, but I guess we can't. So anyway, back to Yahoo. Um, so let's say we want to know, like, okay, well, this, this one is only going back to 2010. But what if we, you know, come up into our address bar here, copy this, come over to the uh, Wayback Machine, and paste in AFAM. So we'll hit show all. Hopefully that'll work. Okay, so, so we can see with the annual results of AFAM, it actually hasn't even pulled anything from it for AFAM in 2013, lame. Uh, but we do have something for 2012, and then we have a gap of about you know two years here. But it looks like we're obviously missing December here, December here, and December here. But let's click on this one because this one is missing this December. So I bet this one starts at this here, this here. So I bet it'll line up just perfectly. So at the moment, again, um, we've got December. 2012 all the way back to 2010 what we need is starting at 2009 and prior so can we do that well let's click on this 2012 version and you like you click here and then it gives you like a calendar and then if it's got like a little blue on it that means it's got a page from that day so we can click on that and wait for it to load and once it loads sure enough we you know we already had this data and but we didn't have 2009 right so now we've got the 2009 data, which shows they were actually making, you know, from 2009 to 2010, they actually made quite a healthy profit, right? They went from 158 to 182. Um, so now what we're kind of curious, okay, well, what about 2008, <laughs> right? Um, can we get some data on uh, 08? So uh, we come back over to here, and or not here, sorry, go back over here. Uh, Right, so click on this one, and we'll just see. So I got a little toolbar here. Yeah, it looks like okay, cool. Oh man, it didn't give us. Hmm, what's this one? 2012, and then before that is 2009. But we don't have anything, so we're missing one bit of data, right? For that the uh, the December 31st, uh, 2009. Um, and one moment we, we actually maybe even get around that. But if you look at 05, okay, they were making about 36 mil. Then they made, you know, almost 45 million, then almost 70 million. And then we could see before they actually dropped down, at least by 09, back to in the 50s. But now and then, again, now recently, they're making much larger digits. So actually, on a large enough time scale, you know, this company is actually still in growth. Um, so that is something that you, you want to kind of keep in mind that, and again, you know, for fundamental investors and value investors, I mean, we're not even looking, we're not like looking to buy and hold for a year. You're looking to buy and hold for 10 years or, or something like that, right? And on a 10-year scale, this company is actually looking pretty solid. And uh, we could continue going back because we could go back again in 2007, right? So we've got 07, 06, 05. What if we want to go back even further? Can we do it? Let's try it. Um, then we go even back to 04, where they were making even less money. So again, growth, still growing. Um, okay, so but what about, what was the one that we're missing? I think we were missing 
was it 2009 or 2008? I can't even remember now. I think, it, I think we were missing a the, the December 20 or December 31st, 2009. No, we got an 09 there. So maybe we were missing 08. I don't know. Surely we would have 08 here though. So 09. Oh, I see. Well, that's weird. Why we? I wonder why we don't have an 08 in this poll because it pulled it on Jan 3rd, 2009. Maybe the earnings just hadn't come out yet. Uh, so I think this is like the quarter, the period ending. So earnings maybe hadn't come out. So so how will we get around that? Well, we could instead click on quarterly data, and I think the way this website works is it'll let us do this. Yes. So. Um, Right, so we want the 2008 data. So if you look, well, you can track their earnings in the quarterly because it looks like we've got a poll here and a poll here. So we might be able to just just add it up, <laughs> right? So, uh, so I think this is a kind of a good example of um, you know what you can do to get around these requirements to, to buy the data. And m most of the most of the companies have enough uh, crawls where you don't even have to do this. But again. Uh, it, with a zoomed out version of this company, I think that in using like Wayback Machine to get the, the older data, uh, to me this company actually looks pretty good uh, from, an, from a value investor standpoint. And based purely on their uh, data. Now, I don't know too much about Almost Family Incorporated, but um, I'll probably actually even look into this uh, company myself. So. Anyway, but again, that's not a suggestion to buy any securities or anything. Don't buy this stock based on what I've said. So anyway, um, so that's kind of a good way to go about uh, getting the historical earnings data for companies. Now, obviously, you could also buy this stuff. Um, I, I think Thomson Reuters will sell it to you. You can contact them. Uh, it's, it's probably in the two, three hundred, maybe five hundred dollar range uh, to get the data. You can also, at least what I did is I just pulled this data uh, with a program and just went through every company and just pulled all of the historical data and then compiled it. That way I didn't even have to go through this stuff by hand. And I might eventually put out a tutorial on how to parse Wayback Machine. I'm just not sure I want to do that to Wayback Machine because it creates probably an unnecessary load for them. So I haven't really decided if I want to show a tutorial on that or not, but maybe I'll do that. If there's enough interest in it, maybe I'll do it. Um, as far as other forms of investing are, or fundamental investing are concerned, um, you know, you might be looking for different stats. Uh, maybe you want something from other pages. Uh, so maybe you want you're looking for uh, something other than the key stats, or you know, you might be looking for other stats. You should that you should already have that pretty down pat. Even if you wanted other stats, you should be able to kind of figure it out from the uh, program that we've shown so far. But obviously, you know, you can parse anything over here. You can parse analyst opinions. You can parse all of this stuff. And they've got cash flow. You can parse other uh, uh, pages and stuff. And so anyway, you know, you can set up a program to do a lot of this kind of research for you. So um, just like parsing Wayback Machine, if anybody, uh, if there's enough requests for something that uh, I haven't really covered fully uh, as far as pulling data from Yahoo Finance, uh, if there's enough requests for it, I'll just make a video on showing you how to do it. I think this kind of series is pretty much wrapped up at this point. There's not too much new I could show you guys as far as parsing data from a table is concerned. And as far as getting the historical data, that's how you can do it. So you should be pretty much all set. Um, then you can start doing you know, security analysis really on the company and deciding what your value of the company is versus you know what these figures have said. Um, so anyway, um, that should pretty much cover it for fundamental investing and all that. From here, you know, you can do all kinds of stuff that you, you know, whatever kind of stuff you want to do uh, from here. Mostly we've just kind of used the computer to, to help us in the research process and find eligible companies. So uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this series. As always, thank you for watching. Thanks for your support, your subscriptions, and until next time.